Good morning, good morning. Thank you. That might have been uh, really premature, guys. Let's see. So thank you for being here. It's like freakishly early in the morning, like 10 AM. And uh, I'm really not a morning person, but I really hope that you all are. <laughs> that might help me a little bit. So the presentation is going to be about procedural fantasy city creation using geometry nodes. Um, super quickly about me, my name is Milis. I'm Lithuanian, so I have like a two minute long surname, so I'm not going to waste half my time explaining it. But uh, I'm a digital mud painter, I'm a concept artist, and uh, an environment artist, all these kind of general roles. And I spent maybe five or six years working in London uh, at the big VFX houses on movies, this kind of stuff. And over the last couple of years, I've gone freelance and been working on smaller projects. But the cool thing that that's enabled me to do has been to create my own pipeline, quote unquote, uh, where kind of Blender has ended up uh, at the center of it. And this presentation is sort of about my journey over the past year or two, learning it and you know, kind of ex experimenting with geometry nodes. And I really hope that uh, you can take something from this, because I learned a lot. And I hope that you can all enjoy. Now let's see if the clicker works. It does. OK, <laughs> so uh, these are like a selection of screenshots that I kind of made um, with the basis of this procedural 3D city that I made in Blender. And throughout the process, I kind of had, I guess, a theme for it. Or you know, maybe I just came up with that like, for this presentation. But I did have a premise or a goal and kind of questions that I wanted to ask. And, uh, I hope wanted to answer. And the main one being, can like an untrained monkey sort of typing you know, Shakespeare's works learn the ge geometry nodes from scratch over the course of whatever amount of time, but hopefully reasonably quickly? Um, and you know, having no technical skills, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I can maybe write hello world, this kind of stuff. But I'm just using the provided tools and kind of uh, going from scratch. And the next kind of premise being, can I go beyond the typical scattering approach when it comes to creating cities? Because I always used to just you know, scatter a bunch of houses. But if you zoom in, nothing really conforms to the ground, these kind of things. So could I use geometry nodes to create something with like a little bit more order? And or you know, hopefully more controlled chaos, something like this, and take it a step further for my workflows? And you know, if it can fit into my pipeline, all these kind of things. And um, in many ways, the project was definitely not maximally efficient. I went down a bunch of rabbit holes that you know, I couldn't get out of and couldn't figure my way out of. And I had to back out and learn different things. And there are certainly a lot of creators in this community with far better skills than me. And as I talk, if you have any ideas, don't shout them out. But afterwards, you, know, you can tell me. And I'm open to hearing suggestions for how I could make things better, uh, this kind of stuff. So big thank you to the community for you know, all the help and support, even though usually I kind of just invisibly stalk the forums. And kind of giving a disclaimer on this whole project, I'm a big cheater. And uh, I use Photoshop, I use Comp to make my images look prettier. And I don't want to disguise that fact in any way. But Blender has kind of been the workhorse of this entire project, I would say 90 plus percent has been done in geometry nodes. And then as you can see here, you know, I have photo bashed in some people, this kind of stuff on top uh, for like a little bit of concept art. Um, you could take it a step further, but you know, time limitations, all this kind of stuff. And I kind of developed this manual, procedural manual uh, sandwich way of working where, you know, hopefully I can do some sketches, some simple block outs of something I want manually, and then use that as a base to do a bunch of procedural work, and then you know, go the last mile doing manual work again. And my goal right now is to give like, an honest assessment of this whole project. And I hope that you can um, join me on the personal journey uh, as, as I go through this. Um, next slide. OK. So here's a bunch of buzzwords. I only think in buzzwords. I, you know, throughout the whole process, obviously, I'm not having natural thoughts. And this is totally not just for the presentation to make it look smart or something, you know, all these words. But uh, the basic idea was to kind of start the work from 
a simple base, which was the central ring, and kind of grow the city out of it. So I have an anchor that is manually placed. I can manually control it. You know, it can be a square or whatever. And I generate the city out from that. <laughs> the cliffs are kind of generated from the bottom faces of all the buildings or of all these uh, tower structures. So usually I think in the real world, you know, the ground comes first and then you kind of build on top. But here I just did it backwards because it seemed to me <laughs> like the city was... Uh, the, the main part of the show, and you know, the landscape kind of just then had to conform to that, and I made a bunch of sand and stuff at the bottom. And, okay, sticking to reality was not my primary concern with a lot of these formations, but I guess that's also something we say when we fail to hit photorealism, so then it becomes a style. Um, and, um, yep, so, you know, there's some judgment that maybe you can throw my way on that, but like, I kind of like this uh, idea of these ridiculous cliffs holding up these buildings, that kind of stuff. And, you know, the rule of cool and all of this kind of stuff. Uh, but the whole process was really a big exploration and kind of like with all my projects in Blender, you know, there was a lot of playing around involved and kind of treated the whole thing like Lego modularly and whatever. And so the basic setup actually for this is that uh, I did like a really redneck DIY loop of you know, the central ring generating some towers from which I spawned some bridges, from which I spawned more towers, from which I spawned more bridges, and, you know, having sort of like this fractal layout or pseudo-fractal. And then at the end, you kind of can go through all of the generation noises and do some seed cherry picking, which takes like three weeks to settle on one because, you know, that's kind of like a really addictive part, and I think I kind of went with the top left one. And here's like an example of, you know, without any buildings on top, without any houses, whatever, uh, just the setup of the towers and the bridges. And this terrain is just sort of like that, taken, remeshed, um, kind of just with some shaders applied to make it look like rocks. Uh, here's a bunch of nodes that I <laughs> made for this project. I was supposed to count them. I have like X written down, so that many. Um, maybe a few more, actually. And uh, thank God you cannot read anything because th it's nonsense. And Geometry nodes kind of enables this creation of little groups, things like this, from which then you can build bigger and bigger and bigger things. And kind of really stack your whole project, you know, where you can start from like really simple, basic building blocks and kind of put together something really big. And as you go, this process accelerates because you have more and more stuff to work off of. And, you know, some of these even made, made it through the whole process without <laughs> needing to change too much. And certainly there are creators in the community who are really, really good at this and better than me, and there has been some overlap in that. Uh, but I think it's really rewarding to kind of understand the inner workings of uh, your own stuff, so then when something does explode, you know how to fix it. And so I kind of roughly, let's say, split them out into levels. I mean, mainly just for the presentation, it's kind of arbitrary, but you know, at the base level, you can have something really simple, just like selections, uh, some very, very fake bevels, some subdivisions uh, that are random, whatever. And then from those, you can build like a next level of stuff, which is sort of targeted material ap applications. Uh, let's see what else, kind of some scattering stuff, um, mesh island based selections. And then from those, uh, you can kind of build the next level, which here I have, you know, stuff like laundry, wires, fences, stairs, which then, you know, you can see how that starts becoming like basic uh, solid building blocks of buildings and stuff like this. And then from those, you do make houses, you can make uh, what else, minarets, uh, markets, uh, temples, all this kind of stuff. And then stacking those together, you can <laughs> kind of have your overall big city layout. I'm really glad this one is too blurry to see. Uh, <laughs> and yes, I did do those connections manually. Uh, I'm kind of really hoping for a loop node to come out and, and kind of make this obsolete. And of course, then you have this. When you go back to your old nodes and uh, you know, I think we've all kind of like gone through the spider web process, usually with other people. And you know, here, see, I didn't put like an output on this node, so there's no escape. That little details. <laughs> and um, here's a bunch of work in progress stuff. So obviously, Blender has much more to offer than just geometry nodes, and there's still all sorts of stuff going on, like modifiers, and I use uh, vertex groups uh, and shading to uh, accomplish some things. 
and we're still in this intermediate stage on the way to, I guess, everything nodes, I hope, uh, where I have, along the way, found some bottlenecks where I kind of end up being like, OK, I need to decimate something and you know, squash down the setup into a decimation and, and then kind of expand further. But funnily enough, you know, I would leave the project for a couple of weeks and then come back and realize half my setups are obsolete because just the software is evolving so fast and it's gotten like 10 updates since I last opened it and I have to update. I mean, it's either that or like someone else in the community comes out with some node setup similar to mine, but infinitely better because they have like a three digit IQ and I don't. <laughs> and, uh, and so, you know, I kind of, you know, then steal stuff from them and uh, keep it really quiet. But that's why I'm, I'm not going to publish some of it because I don't know where it starts and ends. So, yeah, I definitely went through a lot of versions of this project and kind of learned as I went along. And at this point of no return, it's time to make some mood boards. Because, uh, you know, once you're in the middle of the project, that is the correct time to start. And uh, I don't know if any of you work professionally, but that's how we do it in the big leagues. <laughs> that's not a joke. Uh, and so here uh, you have some photos that I took from Alhambra, mainly, in, in Granada, Spain. For the fort, that was a huge inspiration. And for the city itself, a lot of stuff from India and Nepal. I mean, I think the inspiration is really clear. And you know, it always helps to have some real life reference to aim towards to kind of see the level of detail, this kind of stuff. And I did do some shading. I did zero retopology, UVs. You know, it's like the, uh, you know, the monkeys with the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. I don't, Jesus Christ, I don't touch that. Uh, everything is triplanar. And I kind of had this experience where I went with having more and more and more materials as I expanded and then, you know, kind of, I made this on a laptop, so at some point it overheated and I had to scale it back down a lot to just having a limited number of materials, which I'm gonna call giga shaders, not because they're giga good, but because they covered a lot of things. And, you know, you can have, at the scale that I'm working at here, one wood texture or something like this, and based on object ID, you can vary it a little bit and suddenly, like, it seems like there's a lot of different types of wood. All these walls are taken from my photographs, so based on location, height, normals, I can adjust them to kind of, you know, conform to what I need. Here's a lot of trim textures, sort of stuff I used for fences, which was more efficient than doing a lot of stuff in geometry. Thank God the video works. Uh, <laughs> so this is kind of like, you know, speaking of variety, this, this is a selection of the kind of uh, buildings I made uh, for the tops of these tower structures. And, you know, for the texture stuff, actually, a lot of it comes just from modeling detail, lighting, stuff like this. So you can kind of rely on that at this scale quite a lot. And so I wanted to have a lot of variety, so I made some temples, some parks, some uh, housing districts, markets, uh, minarets, and a lot of them are connected with bridges, wires, all this sort of stuff, just to kind of, you know, have it hopefully look more organic. And you know, no one is, I'm the only guy who zooms in. No one ever does. People just scroll through ArtStation, so no one's going to see this anyway. Uh, and here's like the house setup that I had made, which here I'm kind of showing with like a floor plan that I'm uh, adjusting as I go along. But in the project, it's sort of the tops of those huge tower structures that I plug in and use as a you know base. <laughs> I forgot I had this. So that's kind of like how my whole explanation of this feels. You know, the <laughs> step one, step two, um, and. Uh, you know, there is obviously that kind of element to this explanation of it, but you know, it's not that much more complex. You kind of just take the floor plan, assign some uh, island indices to kind of uh, determine how many floors the building is going to have, extrude it that amount, subdivide the sides to make some windows and doors, and then draw the rest of the owl. And you know, around you can do some markets and some other stuff. And I'm Totally glad to explain this, but I'm think, I think I'm talking too slow, or I have too many slides. But you know, here I have it sped up 2x, and I'm not going to lie, I was not planning to say that. I was planning to pretend that the setup is much faster than it is, but now I kind of feel embarrassed now that I'm here. So <laughs> it is slightly bit, you know, slower than this, but you know, you can just create a whole city based uh, from this, and it's kind of like, you know, some greebles on steroids, really. And I'm not scattering anything. Everything is actually just extrusions and stuff from that base. So, you know, using uh, vertices, 
faces, edges, you can create different stuff like fences, wires, poles, uh, the markets. And here is the, uh, this is the vi video that's not gonna work. All right, be it like that. Uh, so this is <laughs> the same setup applied with a different, um, I guess, coat of paint, which is you know, also different uh, kind of types of windows and, and doors and all this sort of stuff. But you know, I'm trying to make it versatile so I can reuse it in the future. And as I'm going along, I am trying to make it more coherent and stable. You know, if I create a new building currently, the previous stuff still gets affected in some way. So with this, I was really trying to fix that. It does work. And uh, there's you know, some stuff flickering. So I think I need to merge more vertices by distance, which is the band-aid to everything. Uh, and uh, here's another screenshot. I don't have a title. I just put this in so I can like breathe because I'm not good at breathing and talking at the same time. So in large part, I made two uh, overarching setups for the city and the castle area, uh, just because they required slightly different uh, approaches. But you know, they start from the same base. Different stuff happens in the middle, and at the end, a lot of the these tools that I had made are reused, and whatever doesn't look good gets hidden by fog and stuff like this. Uh, that's the master tip. Um, so this is sort of like that same thing, showing the central structures you know, for the castle. And the idea was that you know, I can plug in any sort of base and have the castle uh, formations, all, all these buildings, actually conform to them perfectly. Whereas if you just scatter stuff, you know, you're going to have these kind of uh, connection problems. And obviously, when I show it like this, you can tell which ones are sort of generated from the same base, whatever. But uh, my argument is kind of that if you go to a real castle, it is kind of generated. <laughs> you know, all the towers are generated from the same uh, setup, I guess, and then affected by whatever is underneath them. And actually, like here with the toppings title, I wanted to be really funny and put like a pizza slice, but that would be too cheesy. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and then, okay, so another sort of filler slide, but you know, there does come a point when I start thinking, uh, I'm kind of tired, and let's do some things in a way that's slightly more cheaty. And so that, I think, kind of happens around this connection point in the middle. And you know, perfection is the enemy of progress, all this kind of stuff. And I want geometry nodes to be another tool in my belt rather than you know, replacing everything. And so I think with the castle itself, that was the perfect point to sort of illustrate this approach where, okay, the towers are procedurally generated, you know, the terrain, all this, but the stuff in the middle that's actually from the Plaza de España in Sevilla, Spain, just from the Google Earth uh, data, which is another really interesting kind of worms, but I don't have the time for that, sadly. But, you know, the focal point is then organic, and so if you do too much in procedural setups, you have, like, these diminishing returns. So if you only have to make one of something, probably better to just kind of bash it out manually and whatever you have a lot of, then you can do that stuff uh, procedurally. And so, I forgot all of my words. <laughs> no, okay, so, there does, I don't know, yeah, like there does come this point where you kind of go, okay, I've made enough procedural stuff and maybe it is better to kind of try different approaches. And I think you know, the official answer to that is to say something like, OK, there is a time cost calculation, you know, all this, which there is. But also, there is just an element of, OK, I'm tired of this. I have a craving to upload something and get some likes on ArtStation. And uh, yeah, and so at this stage, I kind of did that. And I've played around with a lot of interesting new tools. I mean, everyone's kind of seen stable diffusion, so I've been using photo bashing and, uh, and that to create the spaceships and whatnot. Uh, in all of this, I did have a spaceship uh, setup kind of done, but the reality is that uh, it was not as good as some of the other ones that I have seen uh, at this presentation, so I'm not gonna put it in. Mine is extremely, extremely janky. And yeah, so this is kind of like a good example of, you know, just the paint over stuff, and I think, like, look, I'm one guy working on a laptop half the time on the kitchen counter with like a fan pointed at my laptop, and so, you know, I, I don't have huge resources, so I kind of cut it there. But the cool thing is, you know, I managed to render this out, and this is kind of like an emperor has no clothes moment where you see it without all the fog. 
uh, but I kind of made the camera fly really fast so that um, you, know, you can't focus too much on the details. But you can do some really cool virtual photography using a kind of procedural city approach because you know, you're in this process of discovery, right? And uh, you, know, you can kind of peek around corners, take some photos, and I really enjoy that. And you know, I, I hope that this kind of illustrates where I was uh, at the stage where I finished the 3D. So some lessons to be uh, kind of learned. I guess you can separate elements into individual project files, and that really kind of enables you to work faster on smaller things. You know, I, when I did the house, house setup, I kind of did it in a whole different setup, and that really helped. And you know, just for speed, this kind of thing, because if you work in one project, it explodes. Uh, yeah, so small atomic building blocks, um, better than giga ultra combo nodes. That's why I kind of did all this stuff where I, you know, made everything kind of procedural and bite size, and 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 that kind of has really worked well for me. And it's unhealthy. This does not match. Uh, <laughs> no one cares which procedural seed you use because I always spend like hours and hours on this, and in the end, they all kind of look the same. And. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, p people just scroll through stuff really fast. So, you know, if your overall setup looks good, the C doesn't matter too much. And more uh, wires are always better, so just laundry and telephone cables and all of this kind of stuff. How am I doing for time? Because, oh my god, <laughs> let's not. Uh, and then, uh, if in doubt, add more volumetrics. The, you know, and I kind of tried this in 3D. It was a little bit uh, heavy, so I did it mostly in 2D. And Booleans are not your friend. So I've made this mistake a lot. And lastly, OK, just to wrap this up, Blender is still not fully 100% uh, of my pipeline. You know, I still do this stuff in 2D, whatever. But it has really eaten up everything else that I was previously doing in other softwares in 3D. So that's been amazing. And I'm kind of really you know, refreshing the developer pages, like, come on, come on, come on, <laughs> do more stuff. Uh, really ungrateful, because I don't contribute. I just talk. But you know, guys, this is the slide where I would put my contact details, but I'm like minus 9,000 skill level at self-marketing, so I forgot. Uh, but you know, I have a, like, there's so many, you know, very few dudes out there with my name. So <laughs> I'm sure you can find me. I wanted to say, obviously, thank you to the community. You're fantastic. Clap for yourselves. <laughs> but wait, uh, even better, thank you to the devs. And now you can start. At the end, thank you very much. <laughs>